This is Steve Hayes for the EPRA Annual Conference in London. I have with me now uh, Ernst Jan de Leu, Head of Real Estate Securities in Europe for LaSalle Investment Management. Ernst Jan, welcome. Thank you. How do you see the general outlook for real estate securities in, in Europe over the next year? Um, I would say if, if you look at Europe, then we're in a low growth, low interest rates, low inflation environment. I think the low interest rates are in general pretty positive for real estate valuations. And looking at the current cap rates of real estate, then the gap of the yields with the interest rates are historically very high. And that makes us believe that the values are pretty sustainable. And that, that the valuations are correct of real estate at the moment. I would say uh, looking at the, um, the low growth environment, that is obviously not so positive for real estate. That means that there's simply less rental growth to be expected going forward. Um, the, the low inflation means that the inflation correction will be less going forward. So that has an impact on the cash flows of the companies. Uh, having said that, I think that the, the listed property sector has better than average real estate. So that means that they can do better than the average real estate markets. Um, now, looking at the prospects for European re listed real estate for the next 12 months, we think with the low, ca with, with the low cap rates, uh, with the uh, relatively low cash flow growth, stocks are still relatively attractively valued. Uh, currently, they're trading at a discount to the intrinsic value. The intrinsic value is the value that the companies have taking everything that we expect in the market going forward into account. Uh, having said that, we, it means that, that we expect uh, a total return in the high single digits, low double digits for the next 12 months. Which listed sector markets and property sectors do you expect to perform best in the next 12 months? Uh, I think looking at different sectors and markets, uh, we, we, we expect that the, the difference between secondary and prime will continue. And so the best outlook is for the prime markets, markets where the supply and demand is in better balance. Uh, examples of that are, for example, the City of London office market, uh, which we believe is, is still pretty good going forward. Uh, central uh, offices in Paris can do pretty okay going forward, but also countries that have better economic prospects Will, will outperform. Example of that is Sweden, has a better GDP outlook than the rest of Europe, but also can, can, uh, can control their own interest rates. And on the flip side of that, what do you expect to be the worst performing sectors and markets over the next 12 months? Yeah. We believe that, that, that sectors where there's a, a mismatch between supply and demand will be very difficult going forward. Uh, an example of that could be, for example, the Dutch office market. Uh, there's a lot of vacancy. That means that the pricing power is in the hands of the tenants. So it will be def very difficult going forward to lease up your vacant office space or you have to put a lot of money in your properties to really make them leasable. Another example is, is countries that, that have just a worse outlook from an economic perspective. I think Italy and Spain will be very difficult going forward. And I think the main question is, do these property market prices already reflect uh, what's going on in those markets? Uh, aren't we still too optimistic on yields in those markets? And what's your view on that? Uh, at, uh, well, we, we believe that, that the market is still a bit too optimistic. And we see rental values continuing to decline. We see yields have, have slightly adjusted, but we think that there's more to come. What do you think EPRA's priorities of action should be over the next year? I think most important of all is, is, is we need to grow the industry. Europe is just a very small part of the global market, just about 16%. And I think we need to have our, our, our sector bigger in Europe. I think an EPRA can be very uh, helpful in facilitating the growth, uh, um, lobbying with, with local governments to make sure that the REIT regime is getting improved. I think a big challenge is getting more German companies coming to the market, and so make it more easy for open-end funds to transform into a REIT. Uh, I, th I think that should be one of the, the, the main priorities for, uh, for EPRA, but maybe also making sure that, that that's, it's easier for REITs to get uh, residential portfolios. What do you see as the biggest threat to the global listed real estate sector in the next 12 months? Uh, I think one, one important threat could be if you go into another recession, another global slowdown, that of course has a very negative impact on rental levels. Uh, I, think, I think most worse would be if you, go, if you get into a Japan scenario. Uh, very low inflation, maybe deflation, uh, incredibly low interest rates, no growth. I think that, that would be pretty bad for real estate. With the current yield gap between real estate and interest rates, you could see some, some decline in, uh, in yields in the market, 
But the big question is, is that due to valuation increases or due to rent levels that come down? And Shen, thank you very much. Thank you, Val. You're welcome. Thank you. For this and other industry interviews, please go to epra.com or read.com.